Karibu mtazamaji jina langu ni Zubaida Kome na mtangazaji wa ishara ni Meresha Owiti. Tunaanza na taarifa za jioni hii kutoka tume ya IBC ambayo imesema kwamba idadi ya watu ambao wamesajiliwa kufikia sasa imetimu takriban watu milioni mbili nukta moja sita. Uh, Shirika hilo au matume hiyo imesema kwamba bado inatia bidii katika kuhakikisha kwamba wanawasajili watu hasa katika taasisi za elimu wakiwa ni wanafunzi watawasajili watu ambao pia ni wafungwa na watu ambao wanaishi katika mataifa ya ughaibuni. Tume hiyo imetangaza kwamba katika mataifa ya ughaibuni shughuli ya usajili na upigaji kura itafanyika katika mataifa ya ukanda wa Afrika Mashariki ikiwemo Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, Rwanda na Burundi na katika mataifa ya kusini shughuli hiyo itafanyika katika taifa la Afrika Kusini ambako watu wanaoishi katika mataifa ya kusini mwa Afrika watasajiliwa nchini Afrika Kusini na pia upigaji kura utafanyika katika taifa hilo On this for a participation the commission will register voters in the four countries which participated in 2013 elections that is Uganda, Tanzania, Rwanda, Burundi But in addition the Commission has in, now extended this to cover South Africa, to cover the, the region, the southern countries which are in the southern region, they'll be able to vote from South Africa, and uh, that's Pretoria. Considering the logistics and constraints of time, the Commission saw it prudent and tenable to start with these countries and include South Africa, and then this will allow for progressive registration and voting by Kenyans in the rest of the world, that's the rest of the diaspora, and more countries will fall in the future. Kwingine kwa viongozi wa muungano wa madaktari nchini KMPDU wamefika mbele ya kamati ya seneti kuhusu afya ambako wametilia mkazo matakwa yao wakisisitiza kwamba yanalenga kuboresha huduma za afya kwa manufaa ya mwananchi. Wameongeza kuwa muhimu kwao si kuboreshwa tu kwa mazingira ya utendakazi bali pia ni kunyongeza ya mishahara. Um, na mwenyekiti wa kamati hiyo daktari Fre Wilfred Machage amesema wako tayari kushirikiana na wadau wote katika sekta nzima ya afya wakiwemo madaktari ili kuboresha huduma za afya malipo na mazingira ya kazi Kama serikali hamjasikia hivyo it is sad that you mistreat doctors to that level but since doctors have accepted to soften and actually one part I've read in the petition they have given to the Senate is that they are not sticking to their 300% salary increment. It's written in black and white. This committee will not want to hear doctors in jail. We've had this committee. We've taken your advice as uh, our senior colleague um, that it's time to compromise and we are willing to do so. I want to mention that very clearly. Uh, secondly, I want to say that um, the issues that the doctors have presented are the issues of health sector in this country. They are not issues of doctors. And occasionally I have had to, to state it in a bitter way that every single doctor in this country can have a way out. Mtazamaji tukiwa bado katika swala la mgomo wa madaktari tuangazie sasa ripoti ambayo imetolewa na shirika la Ipsos ambapo asilimia nani ya watu ambao wamehojiwa na shirika hilo kuhusu huduma za matibabu nchini wamesema sekta ya afya inastahili kuwa chini ya usimamizi wa serikali ya taifa huku asilimia mbili pekee wakiunga mkono serikali za kaunti kuhusu mgomo wa madaktari unaoendelea asilimia tatu pekee waliohojiwa ndio wanaunga mkono mgomo unaoendelea na asilimia tano wanapinga Liti hayo asilimia 34 ya waliohojiwa wamesema wameathiriwa na mgomo unaoendelea ikilinganishwa na asilimia 31 ambao wanasema hawajaathiriwa. Asilimia tatu nao wamesema wanawajua watu ambao wameshindwa kupokea huduma za matibabu kutokana na mgomo unaoendelea. Asilimia mbili kati yao ni kutoka eneo la Magharibi, asilimia tatu kutoka eneo la Nyanza na asilimia tisa kutoka eneo la Kaskazini Mashariki. Eneo la Nyanza ndilo linalo unga mkono zaidi mgomo huo kwa asilimia saba waliohojiwa wakisema unastahili kuendelea hadi matako ya madaktari yatimizwe asilimia ishirini pekee ya wenyeji wa eneo la kati ndio wanaunga mkono mgomo wa madaktari unaoendelea
Naam katika taarifa nyingine tofauti ni kwamba naibu wa rais William Ruto amesema kwamba serikali imelitatua tatizo la uhaba wa maji katika kaunti ya Taita Taveta. Akihutubu akiwa eneo la Voi Ruto aliyekuwa ameandamana na baadhi ya viongozi kutoka kaunti hiyo amesema serikali imetenga shilingi bilioni ya mbili kwa ajili ya ujenzi wa bwawa na mabomba ya maji ya mzima phase 2. Shadrack Miti anaarifu zaidi. Naibu wa Rais William Ruto ameendeleza ngoma ya jubili katika ukanda wa Pwani. Na baada ya kuwa katika kaunti za Kwale na Mombasa, alitoa katika kaunti ya Taita Taveta. Na kama kawaida, hoja zake zikasheni ahadi na mipango jubilii iliyonayo kwa wakazi wa Taita Taveta. Yote kwa madhumuni ya kujizolea wafuasi na umaarufu. <tos> Kutokana na hali kwamba huu ni msimu wa siasa, naibu wa rais alikuwa mwepesi kuangazia ukame na ukosefu wa maji. Kwa kutangaza mpango wa serikali kujenga bwao na mabomba ya maji ya mzima phase 2. Tandarasi ya kujenga pipeline ya mzima 2 pamoja na damu ya mzima 2 ya shilingi bilioni 42. Tayari we have awarded that contract. Maji yanatoka mzima lakini yananywa Mombasa yanaosha magari Mombasa. Tuomba hivi maji hayo tusingoje mzima tu. Manake mzima tu tumeambiwa imekuwa ni nyimbo. Ziara yake Ruto inafanyika wakati ukame na njaa vinazidi kuzonga wakazi wa Taita Taveta. Huku mifugo wakifariki nao bin Adam wakiakodolea macho uwezekano kufariki kutokana na njaa na ukosefu wa maji. Mimi vile vile nimefika hapa kwa sababu tulikubaliana Jubili na imekuwa ikitumia mbinu za kuzindua miradi, kutoa ahadi na kisha hivi punde kabisa swala la vita dhidi ya mihadarati ili kujizolea umaarufu na ushawishi katika eneo la pwani ambalo kwa kiwango kikubwa ni ngome upinzani. Sina chama kwa sasa lakini kufikia tarehe 15 si ndio kuandikishaji kura unakwisha ikifika siku hiyo basi mimi naangalia baina ya jubilii na nasa wenye kuandikisha watu wengi ni nani we are not engaged in guesswork we know what we are doing tunaelewana watu wa taita tabeta na ndio sababu mimi nawaeleza tunataka tukubaliane na nyinyi ya kwamba haya ndiyo mambo mnataka yasuluhishwe na tufanye kazi hiyo kwa pamoja and we will not let you down. Kada alikaruta alitoa hatimiliki za mashamba kwa wakazi wa Taita Taveta. Shadrak Miti KTN News. Gavana wa Mombasa Hassan Ali Joho hatimaye amejitokeza kujibu madai ya kuhusishwa na ulanguzi wa dawa za kulevya. Joho amekana kwa kinywa kipana kuhusika na biashara hiyo akilaumu serikali ya Jubilee kwa kuingiza siasa katika vita dhidi ya ulanguzi wa dawa za kulevya. Gavana Joho sasa amevitaka vyombo vya upelelezi kutoa ushahidi dhidi yake ama sivyo wasite kumchafulia jina. Joho alikuwa akihutubu akiwa ofisini mwake mjini Mombasa. There is a purported a renewed uh, zeal or energy uh, inaonyeshwa na jubilee government katika mambo ya kupigana mihadarati sasa mimi nataka niseme hivi siku mingi nimelikuwa nikinyamaza na mambo haya yakizungumzwa i want to remind all of you that in 2013 election mwaka wa 2013 wakati tulianza campaign za kutafuta kiti cha ugavana campaign kubwa ambayo ilifanywa dhidi yangu mimi ilikuwa ni mihadarati so i'm not surprised that uh, that subject has now been reintroduced i expected it na unajua watu wanafanya insinuation mingi ya kusema sijui those that are in political positions sijui wale ambayo wanajiita powerful wale ambayo wanasema sijui nini now me i want to be very clear I want to address both the president and the deputy president na wale ambayo wako ofisini. Kwamba they are not honest and they are not sincere in the war against the abuse, both the usage and trafficking. Na 
wao nataka niwaambie wasikie hivi mchana if they mean business first of all they clean up their own houses wao wenyewe waanze kusafisha manyumba yao na waache hii side show ya kuja hapa kudanganya watu ati kwamba wanatafuta mtu ama wanatafuta watu ama nchi nyingine inatafuta watu what we want to be clear about is that the security organs or agencies report to Uhuru Kinyata and William Ruto vyombo vya usalama vyote vina report kwa hawa swali ambaye tunataka kuulize since when ulisikia mtu anaambia a bank robber at i am giving you a notice mtu anaiba bank unamwambia nakupatia notice Zaidi ya vitambulisho ya 2000 vinaripotiwa kuzuiliwa katika maeneo mbalimbali katika kaunti ya Pokot kisa ni kuitishwa fedha na hivyo kuwanyima fursa ya kujiandikisha kuwa wapiga kura na hata kushindwa kufanya biashara zao nyinginezo. Katibu wa ofisi ya chama cha Jubilee katika kaunti hiyo alishirikiana na machifu wa eneo hilo kuhamasisha na kubaini kuwa vitambulisho vingi vimezuiliwa hospitalini kutokana na wenyewe wa kushindwa kulipa bili za hospitali. Katibu huyo alielezea wasiwasi wake kuwa wingi wa wakazi wa Kapenguria, Chepareria, Sebit pamoja na maeneo mengine wataachwa nje ya shughuli hii ya kidemokrasia kufuatia ukosefu wa vitambulisho. Akina mama ndio waliokuwa wengi kuathirika kutokana na mikopo inayotolewa na wakopeshaji wadogo wadogo ambao mara nyingi hushikilia vitambulisho kama dhamana. Mba ilikuwa ime, ime na ofisi ya registration ya kitambulisho tumehakikisha kila mtu amepata kitambulisho yake na amekata kura. Tutapata ya kwamba karibu vipande 2000 ndio imeshikiliwa na watu wenye wanasimamia Shailo. So tungeapeal ya kwamba machief wa waongee na wao wafanye photocopy, wapaki na photocopies ili kwamba mtu aende na kipande yake na akachukue kadi ya kupiga kura. For the situation ambaye inaendelea saa hii ambaye leo nakao mahindi ya relief na nieleza wazi juzi wanakuja na kipande yake mwenye atakata kura akipewa mahindi anaenda kupata kura yake na, na ukweli wengine walikuja in line number Wakazi wa eneo la Yala katika kaunti ya Siaya wamekiteketeza kituo cha polisi cha Anyiko. Wakazi hao walikuwa na ghadhabu walivamia kituo hicho baada ya mmoja wao ambaye ni mhudumu wa bodaboda kukamatwa na baadaye kudaiwa kufariki ndani ya kituo hicho cha polisi. Rashid Ronald alizuru kituo hicho na anatuletea taarifa hiyo kwa kina. Kituo cha polisi cha Anyiko katika kaunti ya Siaya kwa wakati huu kiko chini ya mikono ya raia. Jamaa walivamia kituo hiki jana jioni na kukiteketeza moto. Nguo na mali nyingine kitapaka kila mahala. Yote haya yalianza jana asubuhi. Polisi wa utawala kutoka kwa kituo hiki wanasemekana kumtia mbaroni jamaa mmoja muhudumu wa bodaboda aliyekuwa ameenda kumchukua mteja katika nyumba mnamouzo changaa. Jama huyo alifariki baada ya kiwa mikononi mwa polisi. Kichomwa ilichomwa jioni. Venye walikuwa wanapiga risasi hao ndio walichangia kwa sababu vijana walio vijana venye walienda yala wakapata ule kweli amelala. Eh? Venye walikuja nao wakaanza kufiatua hiyo marisasi ya risasi zao. Ndio vijana wakaona oh sisi ndio tumesikia uchungu wameua mtu wetu na bado wanatukimbisha wana ndio wakaamua kuchoma. Vijana ndio walichoma. Na wakuchoma vijana peke yake hata wamama. Itakuwaje mtoto wetu achukuliwe aletwe kwa police station na anawekwa hapa anapigwa hadi akufe bila kupelekwa kotini. Na akishaperekwa huko bodi imefika huko alafu polisi natoka na kuja na, na, na risasi ndio hii na hii ndio hii ndio ushahidi ninayo hapa kwa mkono yangu. Hii ni life bullet. Ambaye ni ushuru wananchi wanatoa risasi nunuliwe. Tunatoa ushuru 
ili serikali ikuje ipige sisi na risasi na nyumbani kwa mhasiriwa familia yake jamaa na marafiki wanaomboleza kifo chake mamake anadai kuwa aliuawa na polisi pasi na makosa yoyote alitoka jana asubuhi akienda kazi yake na no, huko na watoto ambao anapeleka shuleni asubuhi hiyo ni kazi yake yenyewe mama anamlipa sasa vile aliamka asubuhi akasema mimi mama ninaenda kazi. Vile alienda akachukua pikipiki akaenda kwa wale watoto yenye au anapeleka shule. Akapata watoto hawaja kuwa tayari bado wanavalishwa ma uniform. Akasema wacha nikae ningoje kidogo na akapata rafiki yake hapo mwingine akasema kama bado unangoja watoto hebu kunywa ya ten kwanza. Na vile Ali, alikuwa baada na kunywa ya ten dakika kidogo na huyu askari onyango anaingia anapata kama mtoto kijanangu baada ameshika glass ajameza anasema alira nimekanya kuja hapa kila siku leo nimekupata tuende polisi katika kituo cha polisi cha Yala wamethibitisha kifo hicho huku akisema kuwa maiti yake ilipelekwa katika chumba cha kuhifadhia maiti kwenye hospitali ya kaunti ndogo ya Yala Rashid Ronald KTN News katika kaunti ya Siaya na mko waliofiwa tunawapa pole. Nipo katika muungano wa NASA na Sibanduki. Mtazamaji hayo ndio matamshi ya kinaro chama cha Wipa Kalonzo Msioka akiwa katika kaunti ya Kisi akijibu madai kwamba huenda anapanga kuhama muungano wa NASA. Kalonzo amesema kwamba kuwa atawania urais katika muungano wa NASA wala chama cha Wipa hakitaondoka kutoka muungano huo. Ni kuambua ana ripoti. Kinara wa chama cha Waipa Kalonzo Musyoka ambaye amedaiwa kujitenga kutoka katika muungano wa NASA na kujiunga na Jubilee amekana madai hayo kuwa kisema kuwa yuko tayari kuwa ni kiti cha urais katika muungano huo. Wakati huo huo Kalonzo amekana madai kuwa anawania kiti cha urais katika chama cha Waipa ambapo itamlazimu kukitenga chama cha Waipa na muungano wa NASA. I am in NASA to stay and no attempt no attempt at uh, ridiculing at speculation um, by anybody from any quarters will derail us from staying in NASA and going for the highest bid and that is the office of the president CCM Nisiku tatu tangu muungano wa NASA kufanya mkutano katika kaunti ya Bomet ambapo kinara waipa Kalonzo Musyoka alikuwa miongoni wa viongozi waliohudhuria. Sasa kiongozi huyo anadai chama cha Jubilee kinaeneza uvumi usiokuwa na msingi ili kuleta msambaratiko. Some of them maybe even agents themselves by our political opponents Correct. to try and cause suspicion. I see my brother Modavadi is also responding the same way. Yes where people are saying NASA is 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 a jubilee project well it isn't baadhi ya viongozi wa kiwemo seneta mteule Beth Mugo wiki iliyopita alikuwa katika mstari wa mbele kumkaribisha Kalonzo Musyoka katika chama cha jubilee Kalonzo amekataa wito huo na kutangaza msimamo kuwa NASA ipo imara na kwamba viongozi wote wameangazia kuibandua serikali ya jubilee he should move with the tide because huko yeye uh, ni flower girl tu hakuna kuna flag lagi na mwenyewe huko even going home by the way this is also an option but this is not an option right now yes yeah wakisema kalonzo wewe staff kwenda ukapumzike wanipe sababu za kutosha then we will discuss but they must also make sure and these are made very clear ni lazima sasa tuhakikishe jubilee wanaenda nyumbani kalonzo alikuwa amezuru kaunti ya kisi kwa rai wenyeji kujiandikisha kwa wapiga kura ikiwa ni wiki moja iliyosalia kwa zozi hilo kufungwa Nicolas Sombua KTN News Nairobi Naibu wa speaker wa bunge la taifa Joyce Laboso ambaye pia ni mbunge wa Sotika amesema muungano wa NASA utashindwa katika uchaguzi mkuu mwaka huu huku akielezea kuwa mkutano uliofanyika katika uwanja wa Bomet ulikuwa wa kumlenga yeye na naibu wa Rais William Ruto akihutubu kutoka nyumbani kwake ni Ola Sotik Laboso amesema muungano huo unazidi kupoteza mwelekeo iwapo watajihusisha na siasa za Bomet Laboso aliteuliwa na Rais kusimamia kampeni za eneo bunge eneo la bonde la Ufa When the residents of Bomet listen, they were expecting to come and hear. 
the policies of, uh, of NASA and what they are going to do for the people of Bomet. But what ended up coming out was just a whole lot of abuses. It is like our governor invited his friends to come and abuse the leadership of, of Jubilee within Bomet. So the reaction um, of the people, particularly immediately after they went, everybody was asking themselves, so what was that? What was that rally about? Did it bring any change or did it promise any changes to the people?